welcome. It's Chris Petrie. Thanks for coming by. We're going to do a wonderful, fun composition. We're going to key in on the actual um, awesome uh, Arches paper. It's the 300 gram, 140 pound uh, Arches watercolor paper that comes in blocks. So this orange cover, whenever you see the orange cover, that's the Arches rough paper, white. Extra, you know, it's like an extra white or white paper, uh, 300, 140, so 300 gram, 140 pound. It comes in different sizes, um, so you can always trust in arches. They do a beautiful job with paper. I think it's, I use this paper all the time. This is like, you know, my one of my top favorite papers. I can paint anything with arches and know that my painting is going to really look good. It's going to look great, actually, using arches. I have um, been using arches for many, many, many years, so... Um, that to me is a great paper you can always trust in. And um, so we're going to start out by just doing a composition here, noticing how Arches is a beautiful paper. You can get great effects doing these trees that we're doing here. So we're doing a beautiful pathway, winter scene, snowy mountains in the background, snow, snowy um, foreground here with a pathway going into the scene, beautiful um, uh, trees with a little bit of sparse foliage on there and some leaves. Gorgeous fence posts with shadows. The trees are casting shadows in the bushes along here. So we have a gorgeous composition here and we're going to show you how using Arches paper really will um, make your life a lot easier when you're uh, creating a composition like this and a painting like this. So and we also do a little spin off too and we kind of chat a little bit toward the end of the video about how you can create this and you can really spin this off into a, an occasional card if you want to. Um, so we're going to cover all that here on this video. So I'm glad you're here. Welcome. And um, if it's your first time here, thank you so much for coming by. I hope you'll uh, subscribe on the right hand side below just so you don't lose me. You'll be able to find me the next time you want to um, join along and do some watercolor painting. And um, we're just having a great time here. So let's get started with the video in just a second. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to um, begin uh, with maybe some just some simple ideas. Um, of course, we're doing winter trees. And uh, you saw the finished uh, paintings, the, or the finished composition to start with uh, in this uh, tutorial, just in the beginning there, first few minutes of our video. So now the best thing to do, I think you're the artist, you'll have to kind of ask yourself this question, but I think you're going to come to the conclusion that I'm kind of getting at the right um, sort of point here that when you're doing uh, compositions, you know, you have a lot of freedom. So you can take a piece of printer paper before you start your composition or even if, before you do a painting even, uh, and you'd want to maybe create some ideas first and say to yourself, okay, so on this, I'm going to say, all right, these are winter trees and, um, you know, Trees can have different branch formations and trunk formations. You know, you can have trees that have, uh, you know, trunks that go, you know, a tree might lean quite a bit. So you might have a tree that leans quite a bit like so, like that. You could have a tree that leans quite a bit. You know, you can have a tree that stands straight up like this, like this. Um, then you can also take notice that with certain trees you have different branch um, formations. So let's say you think about uh, a pine tree. Sometimes a pine tree, like this, the branch formations are kind of like this. So they're at a 90 degree angle, approximately a 90 degree angle from the main, the main trunk of the tree. So like this, right? You know, sometimes they'll curve up a little bit like this, and then at the top they can go a little bit like that. So that can be a pine tree, right? Now the, the trees that we're doing here, you saw this, you know, you saw the, the finished painting, of course. That is more like this here, where we're kind of going to do some straight up trees like this. Trunks are straight up, like so. And then the branches are actually straight going in a straight formation upwards, like so. And that is a really nice looking um, branch formation from the main trunk. That really looks good. So 
if we do a couple of trees like this and we keep the branch formations tight they might be like uh, younger trees that aren't that old so maybe they're there's not a lot of weight with the with the um, leaves and smaller branches so right now these are younger trees possibly so they're not getting weighed down with a lot of leaves so the branches are more upright like so so this is the style we're going to do here you can have all kinds of different styles of course you know you can practice all different bits of um, tree brand you know you can go and do studies on trees you can there's books on trees there's videos on trees I'm sure like video you know of other artists doing paintings for you know on trees is just that that subject matter alone you could you could also look online um, and probably just do like a search um, for different varieties of trees you can probably find a lot of information on the internet so I'm just trying to keep it simplified here but by just saying like the trees that we're painting here are pretty much like this kind of probably newer younger trees the branches are pretty much going straight up along the same line as the um, the trunk of the tree and then we said too there's different types of trees you can you know eventually you can well maybe we'll do in the future and then in, in the next coming videos we'll do a pine tree maybe we'll do a, a really nice leaning maybe a nice leaning maple tree like this you know and uh so there's a lots of interesting things you can do but i just wanted to say this is kind of like what we're looking at for ours that we're doing today so it's pretty much a straight trunk going up vertical plumb you know plumb like this plumb straight and then the branches are just going to kind of do the same thing they curve out a little bit away from the the trunk but then the branches go straight up pretty much for the most part maybe they might angle a tiny bit here and there but for the most part they're going to be straight up vertical vertical like this and so this is kind of a simpler tree formation so if you have these type of trees in your painting maybe you're painting a winter scene and these trees are going to kind of be set uh, they're going to be kind of like th this bit of trees I'm doing here they are like in a winter type setting I'm not going to put a ton of leaves on them I'm going to put just a little bit of foliage on on these these trees that we're going to do here so I'm not going to do a lot so I'm just going to add some leaves but not a whole lot so these this is what we're going to do kind of like that's the formulation of what we're doing kind of just sketching it out first a little bit on paper and again just taking note that there's a lot of different style trees you can do you know there's the leaning tree maybe a maple or a um you know any any there's all kinds of you know poplar trees and uh you got pine you have all kinds of varieties of beautiful pine trees pine trees are absolutely beautiful we'll do some pine trees for certain in the future on these videos but i just wanted to get that kind of sketched out first so you can kind of see what i'm thinking of maybe it's a good thing you can do this too maybe you can take a sharpie or a pencil or a pen or whatever you have and you just sketch out some ideas and you kind of you know you practice maybe holding your your pen or your pencil high up top and then you can get some really nice if you just if you can imagine if you hold your pen or pencil high up you can tend to get some really beautiful just by dragging the marker or your pencil lightly and you just kind of slide it you'll get some really convincing looking branches versus if you're really tight and kind of holding it like a like you're writing you know writing in a, a checkbook or you know uh, making some notes or whatever sometimes when you're too tight and you're holding everything really tight it, it kind of might not look as good if you can kind of raise up your um your your grip on your pen or your pencil and then you just gently rest your pencil or marker or even your paintbrush for that matter onto your paper and you just gently swing your you know you swing your brush or your marker or your pencil upward you'll see that you just if you just let it do its own thing and you don't really do much to it you don't try to influence it that much you'll get some really nice beautiful branches like this like that so I'm just barely influencing the actual marker itself so I'm hoping you'll take advantage of some of this practicing a little bit beforehand on some printer paper 
any kind of paper that's maybe scrap paper, whatever. And uh, you'll see that it really does pay off because you'll kind of learn some things as you sketch and do these type of things where you maybe uh, change your grip on your pen or your pencil. You can do the same thing with your uh, paintbrush. You, you hold your paintbrush really up high like this versus like this. You know, you move your hand all the way up to the top of your brush. And then when you do your brush um, strokes for your branches, you'll get much more free, um, realistic branches um, for your, your tree uh, compositions. Okay, all right. Well, let me just take a quick break here for just a second, and then we'll come back and we'll sketch out a tree on our watercolor paper. And of course, we're covering actually arches paper. So I always mention we like to cover different papers. Uh, so right now, this is actually an arches rough um, video. So, and you saw that in the beginning, but I just want to put it one more time onto the video here. Arches Rough Paper is absolutely incredible paper. It's great for like, um, especially, um, landscape paintings. If you're doing like trees, mountains, uh, water, great for water, you get a lot of great effects with arches. Um, so arches, again, another go-to paper. I use this all the time, a go-to. I can paint anything with arches and it's going to turn out great because I just, the paper is so beautiful. The texture and uh, the way it handles, it just, you know, you can work long periods of time. You can put down a wash on arches and, and just, you know, for five minutes, you can go back in and paint other washes over the original wash you did. And you won't have a problem with that. Sometimes, you know, other papers that aren't the quality of arches, you'll notice when you go to put in another wash over another one, it it just completely um, falls apart and you have all kinds of really unpleasant looking blotches and splotches and things like that. So we'll do a video on that in the future and we'll put all the different watercolor papers uh, down onto our working table here and you'll kind of see how each of them handle. But Arches is known, they're one of the greatest watercolor papers out there and many great artists use them. All the top professionals, you'll find a lot of them use Arches paper because it is kind of like the gold standard for watercolor paper, as well as Fabriano and a few of the other papers we're going to kind of cover here on my channel. So we're going to cover Arches Rough, 300 gram, 140 pound. It's the orange cover. So if you just order the um, gummed block, Arches gum block, you'll see the orange cover. And that's really, um, that's all you need to know. You order the orange and you'll absolutely, you'll be getting the best paper you can get for watercolor. Okay, all right, so uh, we'll be right back and we'll start our first composition. Okay, we're getting started. Um, let's do our composition. And I always say, if you're gonna do a composition, might as well put down some tape, make a nice border if you want with your uh, artist tape. I happen to really enjoy um, pro drafting tape. Pro drafting tape is really phenomenal. It won't tear up your paper. So you can put this down onto your watercolor paper and um, use it for a border. It will not uh, disrupt your, your paper. Sometimes I have to add a little extra um, tape if my roll has, so this, this drafting tape here, pro drafting tape, I had this roll for like five years now. So, you know, sometimes after five years, it sometimes doesn't stick as great, but pro drafting tape is a great tape. So I use it all the time. I have to order some more actually. All right, so I have that there. So I did my border around my uh, paper, just about a half, half an inch border of tape. And then we're going to get right into it and start. Let's get our um, our idea of um, a winter tree, and then we're going to do some some foreground here, like so. And then we're going to do maybe like two or three trees, maybe just maybe a sm couple medium size or large trees, and then a, a small. So let's do this one here. So I'm going to do a little darker. Like this, this one will be, 
And again, I'm going to do some of that holding the pencil high up on top. And this way I can get some good, really very convincing and beautiful natural looking uh, limbs and branches. Like so. I think that looks pretty good. So that's one. And then we'll do another, maybe we'll do a small one here. This one's just a small bit of and then over here we're going to have more. So we're going to have some trunks of trees. This one here is going to go up. This one will be the tallest, so we'll make, we'll make this one the tallest of all the trees. This one here is a little bit uh, less. And I'll try to do that same thing. Hold my pencil up really high on the top of the pencil. And then sort of flick on the branches going upwards. Just do a couple little kind of flicks like that and you have it and then we'll do another tree trunk here next to this one and this one here is like so yeah we'll do a little more and this one will be a little smaller and I think that looks pretty good and then another maybe you missed another small couple branches here a couple new trees sprouting up there and I think that's good now now that we have these trees in, we might as well just make this composition a little bit more fun. Let's add some, uh, let's add some hills, or maybe some trees over here. Maybe these are some trees and bushes back here. And then over here maybe, and then let's do maybe some mountains back here. Like that. So let's do some mountains in the background, maybe some bushes back here. And then there's a little bit of a trail here, maybe. Like this, going into the picture, like that. And I think that should be fine. So hopefully you can see all these pencil lines here. They might be a little bit light. I could make this road, this little pathway in here, a little bit darker. Like this. So that's kind of like that. A pathway leading into the scene. And of course you saw the tree limbs and branches here. And That's good. All right, so we have our pencil um, work done. Again, when you're working uh, in watercolor, I always suggest taking breaks. Does that make sense? Uh, to take a few breaks, because now we concentrated a lot. We got all of our layout for our trees here and some mountains in the background and a little road in here. And we took really good care to make some really nice looking branches on our tree trunks. So at this point here, we've been working 10, 15, well, about five minutes actually, but it seems like a little longer. But after this, after doing the pencil drawing and getting this all completed, that's to me a good perfect time to just take five minutes, maybe even two or three minutes, take a quick break, and we'll come back and then we'll start mixing up our colors and we'll get into the painting. It makes a nice uh, kind of uh, segue into the painting when we take a break, we relax just a few minutes, then we come back and then we're like, okay, now we're focusing on mixing the paints and getting them onto the paper and creating our painting. So it kind of just, you know, gives your mind a, a quick little bit of time to relax and get prepped for the next uh, segment of what we're going to do. So, okay, let's take a break and uh, we'll come right back and we'll start painting. Okay, so we're going to get started now. Uh, first thing I'll mention is I'm using two brushes that are really um, perfect for this painting. I don't think we need much more than this. We might be able to use a larger brush toward the end of the painting. But right now for what we're going to do, I think this is perfect. We have a number four Da Vinci travel brush, which is Kalinsky. It's a Kalinsky uh, sable round brush. Then we also have a number eight uh, Alvaro Castanet needlepoint brush. That's where we're going to get the beautiful details of our um, branches on our trees here. So with these two brushes, you can really basically do this whole painting. So incidentally, these are, you know, almost like a, um, you know, these are similar. This is like a card that you might make for like a holidays or birthdays or special occasions for people where you create cards. And if you haven't, uh, if you haven't uh, checked out my videos on uh, creating occasional cards, all you got to do is just type in my name, Chris Petri, P-E-T-R-I, C-H-R-I-S, P-E-T-R-I, occasional cards. You type in that 
into YouTube and you will see I have created a numer numerous videos, probably five or ten of occasional cards. And then I go through the whole process of how you take your paper and you bend it and fold it and tape it all down. And I do all that great stuff. And this is basically a composition we're doing here. So, but you could turn around and make this composition a, a, like a card if you wanted to. You could just make it like a card without the fold, you know, the folding of the card. You just have a, a card with the back and the front and that's it. And then on the back of the card, you can make your message. And on the front, you can make a little message too here. And then you might make a more uh, detailed message on the back of the card. But, you know, just a single page card looks really beautiful too. So if you want to turn this into a card for any kind of occasion, you can do that too as well. But again, these are the two brushes, a number eight uh, needlepoint brush, uh, Alvaro Cassignet, um needlepoint brush, and a Da Vinci a Pure Kalinsky um, Sable Brush 1503 travel brush. These are the travel brushes where you you can just take them and you unscrew them and then put them in like so. And you can put them into your purse, your pocket, you know, your shirt pocket. You can throw them into a duffel bag. And then when you're ready to paint, you just unscrew them, open them up, screw it together, and you have your brush with your handle all ready to go. And then so your brush hairs don't get damaged. You know, once you're done painting, you take your brush and you stow it inside the, ca the handle, screw it tight. And then this way you can throw it out in your pocket. It's got a hole in the top for air, so your brush will dry. These are just phenomenal brushes. I mean, you know, if you like to do any kind of on-the-go painting where you like to travel a little bit or you go on weekend trips or business trips or, you know, maybe you visit your relatives, anything like that, these are great because you can just, you know, again, put them, take them apart and stow them like this. Throw them in a duffel bag again, your purse, your pockets, whatever. And when you're ready to paint, you just take them out, you paint, and then when you're done, you stow them back again, and you can just leave them like that until the next time. I have a fishing vest I like to use, so when I use my um, travel brushes, I have my fishing vest. When I'm done painting, I stow it, throw it in my fishing vest pockets, and then when the next time from a month from now, if I'm out painting on the weekend somewhere locally, or at my relative's house, whatever it is, I could just take it out and use my brush and then put it back in, throw it in my fishing vest pockets and then you know they just stay there till the next time so just a little fun stuff i like to do and hopefully um some of you will um, take advantage of that great um design of the da vinci uh, travel brush it's a great brush also there's the um i have the escada travel brushes as well those work absolutely fantastic and i have um the escada are similar Escada makes the travel brush too. Just for people, if you like to go out and do some, you know, painting outdoors or whatever, and you want to. And these are the Charles Reed series Escada. So you get three beautiful brushes for a really good price. It's the uh, Charles Reed Signature Series Escada, Escoda um, travel brushes. They're brass. And you do the same thing. You can just stow these. They snap right together quick. It's got the hole on the top so it dries the brush so your brush doesn't get moldy or have a problem. And then when next time you're ready to use it, a week from now, a month from now, you just open it back up again, snap it together like that, and you have your travel brushes. I'm big on travel brushes. So let's get started and uh, let's see here. For these trees, I'm going to do burnt umber, of course, for those beautiful tree trunks. A little bit of French ultramarine blue in there, some raw umber, some yellow ochre. So I'll go right across the, the way here, darker over here, lighter over here. Those are for the trunks, and I think I'll use those same colors, maybe two for the um, trees, tree branches. And maybe I'll add a little bit of um, burnt sienna. And, and you know, why not? Let's go with a little... Uh, cadmium orange and a little bit of green too. A little bit of sap green mixed in there with some of that. So you can see I like to, I think this is a good plan for you if you're just starting out in watercolor and you say to yourself, oh how am I going to paint this and like what's the process? It's really great once you get your um, sketch done with your trees, you just sketch out your trees, you know, lightly on your paper and then the best 
next best thing is just try to get your colors out onto your palette and mix them out like this a little bit. Just get them on the palette. This way you kind of you kind of see, all right, these are the colors I'm really going to be working with for the most part. And then maybe for the snow, I'm going to add some purple. So I'll use some purple for my snow and some uh, cerulean blue too. So I'll use some cerulean blue and per, uh, purple, which is an ultramarine violet by Winsor Newton I use. That's a beautiful tube um, violet that I found. That's the best one I, I, I've found so far that I think is the best for my own personal use and tastes. So anyway, now we have all our colors mixed for the whole this whole composition right here. It's all done for us. You don't have to think about it anymore. So this is a great plan for you if you're a watercolor artist and you're saying, wow, how can I make it easier for myself? Because I tend to, you know, maybe have an issue once in a while where I'm painting and I get, I, I start to second guess things or I don't know what colors to mix. Just mix all your colors first, get them onto your palette like this, and then you're pretty much set for your whole painting. And then you don't have to worry about mixing any more colors. They're all here for you. And then all you do is you just start painting into your, your painting with these colors. So let's start doing it. And then uh, you'll see that now that we have the colors all mixed, it's really simple. Now we're just going to go in and do our, our tree trunks. And you know, I'm going to add some green in there. And I'm just going to trace over the lines that we already did for the um, pencil drawing. So now your job when you're painting is so much easier. You're, you're basically tracing over for the most part. You don't have to you know, stick exactly to what the pencil lines are, but if you kind of just keep to those pencil lines and kind of just, you know, put on some brush strokes pretty close to what you're seeing there on your pencil lines that you've created, you are fine. You don't have to worry anymore. You have it. So the thing is, if you can work smarter and easier, you'll be uh, much better off. And then I'll just take some splashing effect. A little bit of splashing. And then, again, we're going to go back in. And we're going to keep doing the same thing we're, we said we were doing before. We're getting in our trunks and branches of our trees here going over and tracing, basically tracing over with our brush, the um, pencil sketch that we did. And that's really all there is to it. Very simple. Good. Good, good. Now we're going to go over here. And I just tend to go back in and mix up the colors a little bit. I don't want to keep, you know, maybe I'll use a little bit of green here. Then I'll use some brown. You know, I try to mix things up a little bit. I don't want to get a, the same look all the time. And I always make sure I have my sponge to dry off my brush with. So always remember, keep your sponge next to your water pail and take some water off. Or if you have to, you take a tissue, dry off your brush. So you rinse off your brush, rinse off the brush, dry off some of the hairs of the brush on a tissue, then go in and grab your paint. And you'll be, you'll be very satisfied with that kind of a technique if you can keep working that style of technique of just rinsing the brush, checking off the water on tissue or paper towel or sponge or apron, whatever you works for you. We have flexibility all the time here where there's no do it my way. You do it your way and you have lots of options. And then I'll just go back in and get some more darks here. Good. Good. And there we go. And some more there. Wonderful. And a little more. Maybe some more green. Sap green. Over there. Maybe some more green. Okay, looking good, looks good, and up there like so, and that looks fine, and 
there we go. And a couple of stray branches maybe over this way and that way. Got to have a few stray branches going here and there. Perfect. <clears throat> now we're going to take our needlepoint brush and we're going to even get more detailed. We're going to Okay, now we're going to take a needlepoint brush and we're going to get some of that same colors, brown, burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue for a little bit of that dark and then a little bit of raw umber. So just our, and then we're going to do even a thinner, like that. See how, the, how thinner these, these are much thinner lines. They look beautiful. So you got to have, let's have these too. You have to have some thinner ones too. If they all look the same thickness, it's not going to look natural. Real branches have really thin ones and thicker ones. So now we're getting in those really, really thin ones, the thin branches. And that looks fantastic like that. Okay, perfect, look at that. All right, so now we have um, our tree trunks and tree branches completed. Again, we must take a quick break. We've been working almost 15 minutes. I usually, after 15 minutes, I tend to need a break. So let's do that. Let's take a quick break now, and then we'll put some leaves on our trees. And then um, after that... As a matter of fact, we might let this dry 100%, the tree trunks and the tree branches. Then we're going to do the mountains in the background first. Then after that, we'll do the uh, the, the, the foliage and the, some of the very sparse leaves on, on the trees. We'll do that very the very last thing. Because always remember with watercolor, if you put on really light washes of, of um, leaves, and some foliage on these trees. And then if you go over the top of that and try to paint in a sky wash, or you try to paint in some mountain washes, that's probably gonna disturb your, your, um, your leaves and your kind of, you know, leaf forms and foliage forms, even though you're only doing a little bit, that can really be a problem. So let's think logically here. These branches and the tree trunks are okay. We can get away with letting this dry 100% now with a blow dryer or an hour or two to let it dry. Then we can come in and do our mountains with the blue and the purple and the snow. And then after that, we can let that dry 100% and then we'll do the final touches, which are the uh, foliage and the uh, leaves on the trees. So let's see how that goes. I think that's the best way to do this though. And as an artist, uh, you know, watercolor artist, always remember those breaks that you take are really helpful because you can kind of like step back and think about what what's going to happen next what am I going to do next how are things going to kind of happen on my paper as I do this so that's why breaks have always helped me uh, throughout my watercolor journey because when I stop and take a break I can think about what's going to happen next like what is what am I going to what's going to happen with that wash if I put a really light wash of paint on top of this for the mountains and the snow and then I kind of know, all right, I kind of know what that's going to look like, uh, what's going to happen. Then I think to myself, what's going to happen if I try painting the leaves on the trees first, and then I try painting the mountains over the top of that? Then I already know that's going to be bad. That's going to be a problem. Because that mountain color and the mountain washes and the sky washes are going to reactivate that light wash of the leaves that we're going to put on. So that'll kind of make the leaves kind of get all, you know, um, they'll just tend to like smudge and look really awful. We want to keep those leaves looking very, very fresh looking on the trees, fresh looking. And uh, so the best way to do it is once we're done with this, then we do the mountains in the sky in the foreground here. Then after that, when everything is 100% complete, dry, then we'll go on top of that with the leaves on the trees. So I hope this makes sense. And again, you saw the finished painting in the beginning of the video. So you kind of know already like what I'm kind of doing here. So let's take a quick break and then I'll come right back and we'll do the mountains, the foreground and the sky wash. And then 
once that's done, then we'll do the leaves and then we'll be completed. All right, we're getting back here started and we're going to do the mountains in the sky in the foreground. Let's do this quickly though. Let's not take a lot of time. And um, this is going to kind of be the backdrop to the painting. So we really don't have to do too much detail on this. Let's just kind of, um, we'll do some raw umber over here too. So we're going to, let's do this for the sky and the snow. We'll, we'll mix it right here. So for the sky wash, the mountains and the foreground, we're going to use this section here just to mix that, the colors that we need. So we're going to use the purple, of course. Ultramarine Violet Windsor Newton. Then we're going to do some raw umber over here. And then we'll use some cerulean blue here in the center. And that's pretty much all we're going to need. So we'll be careful about how we work with this. And I'll use a little bit of raw umber in this too, just to gray that down a bit. All right, so let's do some mountains. So I'm going to use a, this. I did use a diff, I'm going to use a different brush here. This is a number six Raphael um, Kalinsky um, sable brush. You can always tell when you just if you look for Raphael brushes, you'll always see the orange tip on the brush. So that's the the series that it is. So if if you see the orange tip, then you know you're you've got the right brush. And then it's just a, and, and then it's just a matter of the size of the brush. This is a number six. Uh, the Raphael um, brushes come in many sizes. They probably come in probably two, four, six, eight, eight, ten, all the way up to like probably 14 or so. So this is a number six though, and we'll, I'm going to do the mountains first. And it's that purple color, and I'm going to hold the brush high up like this because I'm not trying to get too um, detailed or... Um, I'm just trying to get the mountains in here. So if you can just hold your brush lightly, maybe leave some snow on there, on the mountains, like that. And then maybe on the bottom of the mountains, we'll mix in a little bit of the cerulean blue. Like this. So the bottom of the mountains are a little bit more... Um, we use a little more cerulean blue and uh, raw umber. You can kind of see how I did that. I'm going to blend that up in there like that. So you have the, and then a little bit of purple in there too. Let's blend that purple in there in the bottom here, like so. And then we can do even some darker bushes and things. Let's get some raw umber like this. Burnt umber, raw umber, cerulean blue. And let's do some bushes like that. Just you can even flip up, flip up some bushes like that, like that over here too. And then a little bit of finger painting always works good. And then we'll get, this is all going to be snow in here. So let's leave that snow, and maybe the road's going to be a little bit, a mixture of that brown and... Brown and purple, or the uh, raw umber and purple and cerulean blue. So if we can kind of mix those three colors, you know, it's always good to mix some good um, variations in your colors. You know, you kind of want to avoid using just one color when you're painting. That's If you keep that kind of thought, is does that make sense? If you're painting, you kind of want to avoid just using like one color. I did use just the one color up here. I will admit that for my mountains up here, purple and white. So the white is the snow. But now I'm going to interject a little bit of the color, a little bit of that raw umber and cerulean blue in there, just here and there, tiny bit. And but that but that is a good rule of thumb to try to mix at least have some mixes of colors. Like it really wouldn't be good to just use one color. So try to mix your colors just a little bit even if it's
couple of splashes. Then up top on the um, sky, purple. Let's use purple in the sky, cerulean blue. Two as well, so we're going to mix the same thing. Cerulean blue here, purple, cerulean blue, and some raw umber over here. And let's do that for the sky colors. Have fun, scrub the brush around a little bit. The sky would tend to be more purple and blue at the top. Up here. So the sky is darker at the top and then it gets lighter as it gets closer to the bottom of the painting, like that. Not too much fussing though, you can kind of see. Clouds, I left some white clouds there, here and there. You can also make some white clouds by just taking a tissue, balling up a tissue and then just lifting some paint, like that. You can soften the sky even if you want by just tapping on the paper with some tissue. And then maybe a little bit of purple over here. There we go. Okay, that's a happy painting right now. The last thing we're going to do is put the leaves, the very, very light amount of leaves and foliage on these trees when we're done here. But now we have to let this dry 100%. So you can use a blow dryer at this point, or if you want, you can actually um, just let it dry for a couple hours and it should be fine. And the way you tell if it's dry is you just walk, you come back to your table, to your art, you know, to your art table, or if you're just sitting in a easy chair and you're working on a sketchbook type of um, setup, or if you're at your kitchen table, however you like to work, or at an easel, um, you just come up to it and you look at your watercolor paper and you just really relax and just really look at it and say, do you see any kind of like wet spots on there? Is it pretty, does it look dry? Kind of like be like a scientist and look at your paper like a scientist and make sure it's really dry. If you don't think it's really dry and you really look at it closely, then you know you have to let it dry some more. Obviously, if you use a blow dryer, it usually only takes like one or two minutes and it'll be completely dry enough that you can work, you can go back in and start working on it. So it's up to you how you want to have your paper dry. And um, I'll leave that up to you. You're the artist. And then um, let's get started in just a second or two after this dries. And then uh, we'll finish up the painting with some beautiful foliage and some leaves splashing. And uh, we'll uh, wrap it up. All right, so we're back, and uh, I always like to mention, uh, if you haven't uh, subscribed yet to my channel, it's right here on the right-hand side. That subscribe button is right there. This way you kind of keep in contact with me and all that we're doing here on my channel. You click subscribe, you'll be getting all my videos in your YouTube uh, channel when you open up your YouTube channel the next time. Um, you'll see my videos. This way uh, you can be uh, always uh, aware of what we're working on, you know, whether it's uh, landscape paintings like this with trees and covering papers and a watercolor paper or watercolor paints or palettes or whether we're doing portrait paintings or flower paintings or seascapes, whatever we're working on, it's always watercolor. So you'll always know you're getting watercolor uh, videos here uh, on the constant basis, which means you're going to learn watercolor really well um, just as long as you're sticking with us every week and we're working here we're week after week, month after month, and year after year. So all you got to do is just remember, if you're, if you're coming here on a regular basis and, and working on these paintings that we're doing, no matter what we're working on, if you're just trying a little bit of it and, try, and using the paints and the paper, doing the sketches and, you, and then painting a little bit, 
you'll get the feel for it. Watercolor is not, uh, you know, rocket science. It's pretty much, it's definitely, you know, you can learn this, but it does, you know, you have to kind of stick in there every week and, and kind of put a little bit of effort in every week, maybe a couple hours a week or an hour a week. And if you do that, you will learn watercolor and you'll have a fantastic time of it, okay? So I promise you that. Stick with me here and always leave me questions or comments in the comment section if you have anything that's uh, you need uh, answers to for your um, your watercolor painting, uh, drawing and painting in watercolor. And um, I uh, read my comments all the time. I'm always in my comment section answering all my students that are there. So if you are in the comment section, you guarantee you know I'm going to answer your questions and you know, um, uh, be there so that, uh, you know, you can, uh, learn more and grow and, uh, not get stuck on anything. You'll be able to, you know, keep progressing. So let's finish up here. We were using three brushes, as we said in the tutorial so far, we were using basically predominantly three, uh, brushes. We were using the, um, number four, uh, da, da Vinci travel brush, which is a great brush. And then we used the number six, that was for the trees and the limbs and the, and the trunks. Then we used the number six Raphael brush for the sky and the mountains and the foreground and the road and some of the bushes for the larger washes. And then we used the Alvaro Castanet number eight needlepoint brush. And that was for the really fine branch, branches here on these trees. Um, and then also, now that we're going to finish up the painting, we can basically use either of these two brushes is fine. You can use the um, needlepoint brush to get some branches on here, or you can use this um, Da Vinci. So I think I might use the Da Vinci to start with, and I can also transfer over to the um, needlepoint brush too if I need to. But let's see how the, it works first with the um, travel brush here. So again, we said we're just going to use some sparse leaves and uh, foliage. We're not going to, it's winter, it's a winter scene, so you have snow on the ground here. So we have snow on the ground, which is a little more splashing there. And then we're going to get some same colors that we used over here. I'm just going to go in here, get these colors. Now what I do is I load up my brush, but then what I do is, which is very, very important, you need to ch check off a little bit of that paint on a paper towel or a um, tissue first, because you don't want too much paint on your brush. And that's how you get that light feel for um, some light foliage and you can kind of up. Okay, so I noticed that I need a little more paint. Maybe a little more burnt sienna there. You can always blot up a little bit if you have to. You can splash a little bit. I'm going to splash a little bit. So right away I'm going to splash on some kind of leaf forms on my my trees here. And then I want to do some also some some like that. Just a little bit of raw umber, yellow ochre, maybe a touch of green too. So I just mix up some color. I dry off a little bit of the paint. I'd rather have too little paint on there and then you can add a little more paint versus if you go in with too much paint, you can actually really kind of have a problem with uh, the um, and I use the side of the brush like this. So I'm not using the brush like this. I'm using the side and kind of just scraping upwards. And I think you can kind of see that we have some really good foliage. And you can also do some finger tapping on your, you can splash a little bit and then finger tap on there. That works too. But the thing is we want to avoid doing too much. I think that's perfect. We don't want to do any more than that because uh, this is winter time and we don't want all, we don't want tons of leaves on there. We just want a little bit. So this might be late fall, early winter, and this might be a little bit of a snowfall here.
You can even take your needlepoint brush and then kick this up a notch and get a little bit of um, burnt umber. So we'll use burnt umber, raw umber, a little bit of French ultramarine blue. And then you can, to make the foreground a little more interesting, you can put a couple, a couple of branches and twigs and maybe a small little bush here, like this, just like that. Like that, and then you can even, after that, take the um, travel brush, a brush again here, and just do some splashing on that section right there. Raw umber, maybe a little bit of cerulean blue, warm and cool everywhere, so let's add a little bit of cerulean blue there too. Maybe some cerulean blue up here too. Okay, so you have a bush over here with some some a bush with some twigs and branches, burnt umber. So now we're going to make some darker tone uh, tonal value, burnt umber and French ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt sienna. We get that on our needlepoint brush. You can even take a little bit off the brush, paint off the brush just a little bit so we don't have too much on there. Like that. And then you can even do some fencing here. And you can do some fence posts here, like this. Like that. then you can do some shadowing. Just to really kick this up a notch, make it a little more interesting. Get some purple for your shadow colors. And then you just tell yourself, where is the light coming from in this painting? Well, right now it's been kind of like we didn't really have a definite location for our light, but right now we can make that location this here. So now we do that. We say, okay, the light's coming from there. So the sunlight's up here in the sky, up here, and then that means the shadows are going this way. So then we can just put a couple of shadows on the ground here, where the fence posts are, like that. That makes it look more interesting. And then a little bit of the, like that. And then also the trees, purple. And then this way it adds a whole other feel for the painting when you start adding these shadows coming from the right to the left this way. And that's all we're doing here. And you can put some shadows under these bushes here. Here, so these are like... You can just add shadows along this whole area here where all the bushes are on this pathway. And again, you have the trees like that, with the branches up here. And that adds a whole nother feel to it. And I'm hoping you really enjoyed this video. Again, I always thank you for coming by, enjoying uh, our time together as we work on our paintings. I like to also peel off the um, tape so you can kind of see how it looks if you were to frame this painting. So I'm hoping that when you're creating these compositions at home, if it comes out good, I'm hoping you're going to actually put this in a frame and um, hang it up on the wall, or you might give it as a gift, or you might make it into a, uh, an occasional card where you can basically just um, take the card, turn it over, put a message on the back for someone, and then you can also put a little message on the front of the card too. You just have to take a ruler carefully, you know, 
best way to, to do this, you would just take a ruler, put a very, very light pencil line uh, on the front of your card. And then when you do that, then you can write on the top of that pencil line your message like, um, you know, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year, whatever it is. And then you erase the pencil line once you draw the um, message in. Maybe you do the message in like a magic marker. Maybe you use a Sharpie or something like that or a pen. So you can use a pen or a Sharpie to do your message after you put your very light pencil line on your card. Then when you're done writing your message with your um, Sharpie or your pen, then you erase the pencil line. And it's always a good thing too, if you can, you would, t you would write your message first with a very, very light pencil line first, just in case you have a problem with spelling something or something like that. Well, then you can always respell it and just erase it a little bit. But if you go right in and draw in your message with pen, it's hard to fix that. If you, by accident, you, get, you have a letter wrong or you misspelled something, so don't worry about it draw your message in pencil, very light pencil first, make sure it all looks good. Then you go over the top of it with your Sharpie or your pen or your marker. And then after that, you erase the pencil lines. And that's your you know basic idea. And you do the same thing for the back of your card. If you're gonna write a small poem on the back of your card or a message, you know, make some pencil lines across the back of the card like this with level with a ruler to make sure the lines are straight. And maybe you make like 10 lines, one, you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You space your lines evenly, maybe one centimeter apart. So one centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters. You make little hash marks. We can even do it right now. So you would take your, if you want to make this an occasional card or something like that, you would just take your card, rest your ruler on the card, and then make your marks every centimeter. One, two centimeters, three centimeters, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then you just make sure your ruler is straight when you do your lines for the most part. You do a light pencil line across, very, very light pencil line, very barely visible. I'm doing it darker here on my video so you can see how I'm doing it, but you'd wanna go super light with your pencil line, barely visible, just so you can see it and you can write your message on the paper. And you'd write your message first and, you know, um, happy holidays, happy holidays, and then the message, and you write it down here. Then you go over the top of it with your pen. So you might have your pen, and you draw your pen, pen lines over the top of your pencil lines, as long as it looks good and it's spelled correctly and you find you're happy with it, then you do that. Then... Once you're done with that, you just erase. You erase the pencil lines. You won't even see them. And all you'll have left is the ink. Looks perfect. And you have yourself a great looking card for the uh, any occasion you would like. So these are all fun things we can do in one video. So we tackled a whole bunch of information. We talked about arches. This is arches paper, rough paper. It's the orange cover, uh, 300 gram, 140 pound. Arches, rough paper, white paper, watercolor paper works phenomenal. I use it all the time. It's great paper. You'll never be disappointed with it. Then we used uh, our methods of using um, the uh, alla prima method here, where we painted our tree tr trunks first and limbs first, got those in. Then we told our, we asked ourselves, what's the best way to finish the painting? Well, the, the best way we found out by just standing back, taking a break. Let's do the mountains in the foreground and the sky next. Then after that's all dry, we use a blow dryer. Then we come back in and we do our leaves on our trees, very sparse leaves. A couple of the bushes here. And then to finalize everything, we did some beautiful shadows for the trees and um, some fence posts here just to make it look really, really finished. And there you have it. So hope you'll enjoy this painting, this composition. Have fun with it create it, spin it off into any different direction you want to. And um, we're going to see you on the next video. And again, thanks so much uh, for all your kind comments in the comment section and for following me uh, year after year as we continue to enjoy the watercolor journey. And so I'll be back soon and we'll paint another gorgeous painting and have a fun time. Okay, so we'll be back very soon. Bye-bye.